Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in trigonometry and maths. I hope that you've had an awesome break and that you're ready for your fourth term and you're ready to work really hard. So in this lesson, we're going to be going through the sine rule, the cosine rule and the error rule. What we're going to do for each of those is we're going to state wonder where my, you know what, I'm actually missing some diagrams, yeah, I am. Um, just a second, I don't know what's going on here. I thought so. Just a second, grade 11s, uh, there's something going on. Um, I don't know why, but there is, hang on, um, there we go. Okay, because before I get to the sine rule, the cosine rule, and the area rule, I want to go through a couple of general solution questions that we actually hadn't done last term before we ended. So I want to do that now with you. So let's go through it. The first one says, determine the general solution of cos 2 theta plus 4 sine squared theta minus 5 sine theta minus 4. Okay, so firstly, you need to realize that this is sine squared theta, this is sine theta, this is just a number, and this is cos 2 theta. So because we've got more sine thetas than we have cos thetas, I think we're definitely going to change this cos 2 theta to have something with sines in it. Cos 2 theta, you've got three options. Cos 2 theta can either be changed to cos squared theta, minus sine squared theta or you can change it to sine squared theta sorry let's try again equal to 2 cos squared theta minus 1 or you can take it to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta okay so like i said all of this this is sine squared theta this is sine theta that's just a number i would change the cos 2 theta to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta because in that case it's actually got the same um it's got the same variable your sine theta as a variable okay so that's what we're going to do now we're going to write this as and we're going to put it in brackets 1 minus 2 sine squared theta Okay, that is your cos 2 theta. Now I'm just going to bring down the rest of this. So I'm going to go plus 4 sine squared theta minus 5 sine theta minus 4 equals 0. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to add like terms because we don't have to worry about this bracket too much because it's in the front and that means it's got a plus in the middle, okay, right? I'm in front of it, so we don't have to worry about it. So therefore it becomes one, I'm gonna write it out again, okay? One minus two sine squared theta plus four sine squared theta minus five sine theta minus four, if that makes it easier for you to see. So we've got one, yeah, that's a plus one. Remember, it's an implied plus one and minus four. So minus four plus one is going to be minus three equals zero. And this is minus two sine squared theta and this is plus four sine squared theta. So do you agree that that becomes, it's the same as saying two sine squared theta and then we're left with minus five sine theta. Okay, now I do notice that a lot of my students don't understand or freak out, let's put this way, they freak out a little bit when they see the sine theta in what is obviously a trinomial. So here's a little hint and you're welcome to do it. You can say let sine theta equal x, okay? If that's the case, then do you agree you've got 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals 0. And this now, suddenly, grade 11, looks like a grade 9 trinomial that you can factorize. How easy is that? So do you agree we can then say, okay, fine, let's just factorize this. The factors of 2 are 2 and 1. The factors of 3 are obviously 3 and 1 or 1 and 3. Okay, this minus tells me that the signs have to be different. Okay, and this t minus tells me the bigger one must be a negative. So, we're going to cross multiply. So, 2 times 1 is 2, and 1 times 3 is 3. 
Now to get the minus five, yeah, I'd have to go minus two minus three to get minus five, but that wouldn't work because I need the signs to be different, okay? So that's wrong and that is not an option. So then let's get this one. Two times three is six and one times one is one. If I went minus six plus one, I get to minus five and yay, it works. So therefore, I can say, Okay, let's just raise all this, just to get out of the way. So do you agree therefore that I can say that this is going to be two times three is six, but it has to be minus six. And one times one is one, but it has to be plus one. And then you remember you write it from left to right. So it becomes two X plus one, X minus three equals naught. And now what we can do is we can solve for X. So we can go two X, plus one equals naught or x minus three equals naught. Therefore, we've got that two x is equal to negative one or x equals three. And then obviously x is equal to minus a half, right? But now what you need to also realize is that we're going to now have to substitute the sine theta back in. We have to substitute the sine theta back in. So we therefore we can say therefore the sine theta equals minus a half or a sine theta is equal to what? It's equal to three. But can sine theta equal three? And the answer to that is no, it can't. Because if you think about a sine graph, remember the sine graph looks like this. It goes la, 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 la. Top of this is one and the bottom is minus one. So the biggest number that a sine can be is one and the smallest it can be is minus one. So definitely not three or minus three for that matter. So this is not a possible solution. So therefore the only possible solution we have is that sine theta equals negative a half. So now what do we have to do? Now we have to find our reference angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna erase some of this. I'm gonna erase the red so I've got space to write. Okay, remember grade 11s, if you're watching this live, um, you can watch a recording of this, so you can go back and watch exactly what I've done and then come back again and then fix it, okay? So don't panic too much if you don't understand what's going on, okay? You can come and watch it again. So if I raise something that you wanted to see again, you can come and watch it again. So now we want the reference angle. So we're going to use the fact that sine theta equals a half. We don't put in the minus. The minus we're going to use later when we allocate quadrants, okay? At the moment, all we're doing is looking at the fact that this is sine theta is equal to a half. So we're going to find our calculators and we're going to switch them on. Oh, I always forget to do this in a second. Properties, order, hide the taskbar, okay. And then let's go back to the calculator. Oh, that's much better, now you can see the whole calculator. Okay, right, so there's on. So what are we doing? We're doing shift sine of a half. So again, shift, sine of 0 0.5 close bracket equals 30. Okay, so we know the reference angle is 30 degrees. Okay, now we see look but sine is negative and we have to think where is sine negative and do you agree that sine is negative in the third quadrant and the fourth quadrant? Therefore, we are looking at theta either equaling 180 degrees plus 30 degrees plus K360. Why K360? Well, because of the fact that the sine graph has got a period of 360 degrees. Or, or we're looking at theta is equal to 360 minus 30 plus K360 degrees, because it has to be in the fourth quadrant. So therefore it's 180 plus 30 is 210 degrees plus K360, or it is 330 degrees plus K360.
360. And there you go. That is a general solution for the cos 2 theta plus 4 sine squared theta minus 5 sine theta minus 4 equals 0. So when you see something like that, don't freak, okay? Don't have a panic attack. Just take it nice and slowly and see if you can come up with something that you can do by yourself. And great. 12s, I mean grade 11s, I have to tell you that I say this to my students all the time. When I start this question, I know I've been doing maths for a long time, but when I start this question, I don't necessarily know exactly how to go, I'm going to necessarily do it, but I just follow the math rules and then use logic and apply my logic with baby steps and then there you go you end up finding out the solution okay so now we're going to do this one which was sine 2x plus 3 cos 2x equals 0. okay so again we want to basically find the solution for x again we're finding the general solution Okay, so this one's a little bit trickier because what you need to do is, you'll see, well, I'll show you how we're going to do it. But first of all, let's take this one side across. So let's say sine 2x is equal to minus 3 cos 2x. Okay, now do you agree that I could divide both sides by cos 2x? Okay, if I divide both sides by cos 2x, what do I get? I get tan 2x is equal to negative 3. Aha! So now tan graph is different because a tan graph looks something along the lines like this. It goes away and up and up. So do you agree the tan graph goes from minus infinity, we're talking about the range now, from minus infinity up to positive infinity. So it can equal a negative 3 or even a positive 3. Okay, so what we're going to do again is we're going to use our cast diagram. We're going to go all stations to Cape Town. We're going to find our reference angle, okay? In other words, we're going to say when, what is the angle for 2x? We're going to find the size of it. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to go shift tan of 3. So we're going to go shift tan of 3, close brackets equals, and it's 71.57 degrees. Remember, we're rounding off to two decimal places. So it's 71.57 degrees. Okay, so in that case, this is 71,57 degrees. But now that is the size, the size of 2x. But now we need to find where it is. And tan is negative in the second and the fourth quadrant. Therefore, we can say 2x is equal to 180 minus 71,57 degrees plus K180. Because remember, tan has a period of 180 degrees. For example, this basic half of it, well, part of it, goes from negative 90 to positive 90. So it is from minus 90 to positive 90 is 180 degrees. Or 2x is equal to 360 minus 71,57 degrees plus k 180 degrees. Okay. Right, so now let's have a look at this. Let's first put this in our calculator and then we can divide by 2. So let's do that. We're going to go 180 minus 71.57 equals 108.43 degrees. So we're saying 2x is equal to 108,43 degrees plus k180. Okay, but that is equal to 2x, and we're asked to solve for x, so what do we need to do? We need to divide this by 2. Therefore, x is equal to 54,40, now remember this would be 41,5, so for 1,5, so we round off to two decimal places, 2, plus k, 90 degrees. So that's the first solution. X is 54.42 degrees plus K 90 degrees, okay? Now let's have a look at this one. We've got 2X is equal to, and again, we need our calculator. So we're getting 360 minus 
0.57 equals 288.43 degrees. That's so 288.43 degrees plus K180. But again, remember that this is 2x. So what do we need to do? We need to solve for x. So therefore, x is equal to 144, comma, if we're dividing this by 4, why did I say this was a 4? That's actually not a 4. Sorry, guys, that's a 2. 22. It's very irritating. Sorry. I'm trying to find the eraser. Oh, come on, find the eraser. What is it doing this for? There we go. Oh. Okay, 22. Okay, 144, 22 plus K 90 degrees. Okay, and that is the general solution for your answer. Okay, happy with that. Okay, now that we've done this, now we're going to be looking at our sign rule. So like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to state each of the rules so that you can become aware of them. Then we're going to prove them to you and then we're going to apply them. We're actually going to use them. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is know the sign rule. Now, what's important is I know a lot of you learn to use the sign rule with right angles and that's fine. So in other words, instead of using Sokotoa, you guys are using the sign rule. Cool, no problem with that at all. Um, but you need to know that you obviously cannot use Sokotoa with non-right angle triangles, okay? Which means you have to therefore know the sign rule now, okay? For when we go into triangles that have not got right angles. So the sign rule is that sine A over the line of A, length of A, is equal to sine of the angle B over the length of B, which is equal to sine C over the length of C. Or obviously we can uh, reciprocate them. In other words, if we flip A over sine A, then obviously it's gonna equal to B over sine B, which equals C over sine C. Okay, so let's look at proving this. So it says, for any triangle ABC, ABC, um, with AB, length AB is equal to little c, and BC is equal to little b, okay, and obviously uh, BC equal to little a and AC equal to little b, we can construct a perpendicular height at F, okay, so that's what we're doing, we're constructing the perpendicular height at F, that's all we've done. Now, do you agree that if we look at triangle ABF, let's look at this red triangle here, I mean the purple triangle here, ABF. Now we're going to use Sokotoa and we're going to look at sine of B, okay, sine of B. So do you agree that sine of angle B is equal to the opposite over that part in you. So it's going to be H over C. Okay, do you agree with that? So therefore, do you agree that H, this line in the middle, is equal to C sine B? But now, if we look at the triangle on the other side, let's make that red. If we look at the red triangle, okay, and we look at this angle and we say sine C, well, sine C is what? It's opposite of our hypotenuse. Oh, I don't know why it's doing this. There we go. And H is the opposite side of angle C, and B is the hypotenuse. So sine C is opposite of our hypotenuse, so it's going to be H over B. Again, if I solve this, I then have B. The sine C is equal to H. But therefore, do you see that in the top bit, in the purple, I've got C sine B is equal to H. And in the dark red bit, I've got B sine C equals H. So therefore, I can say that C sine B is equal to B sine C. Okay. And it totally depends on what I decide to solve for. Let's say I decide to take the B over to this side and the C over to that side. Therefore, I'd get that sine B 
over little b is equal to sine c over little c. Or I could have done it the other way around. I could have taken sine b over to this side and I could have taken sine c over to this side and I would have ended up with or I would have ended up with c over sine c is equal to b over sine b. There you go. So that is the proof of the sign rule. In grade 11s, I'm sorry to say this to you, but you do actually need to know the proof of the sign rule. If you don't know it, then you are going to be sadly losing marks in either the grade 11 papers or the grade 12 papers. So let's look at the application of the sign rule. This is a very basic example. All that you've got, you've got two sides, you've got 6.5 and 13.8 and an angle. And they want to know the length of AC, the length of AC. So in order to get, actually this isn't quite as basic as I thought it was going to be. In order to get the length of AC, do you agree we need at least one other angle first? So what we can do is we've got that 6.5 is opposite 27 degrees. Do you agree I can get the 13.8, I can get this little angle here, that angle there, the A angle, because I've got that this length is 13.8, and then what happens is I can get this side and then I can get B. Okay, so let's do that. So first of all, we can get size A. So I'm gonna go sine A, over little a, this is now little a, is equal to sine c over little c. So this is big C and this would be little c. Okay, so what do we have? We've got sine a over 13.8. And here's a hint. If you're trying to work out an angle, then put the angles at the top. If you're trying to work out a side, then put the sides at top. That's how easy this is, okay? So it depends totally on what you're trying to find as to what you would put on the top. It doesn't matter if you're trying to find a side and you put the angles at top or vice versa. You will be able to work it out. This is just a hint to make it easy for you. So sine of C, this is 27 degrees. So this becomes sine of 27 degrees all over little c, which is 6 comma 5. Therefore, do you agree that sine A is equal to 13 comma 8 sine 27 degrees all over 6.5? And then all we need is our calculator. So let's get our calculator out. And it says... Um, what does it say? It says, um, uh, where does it go? It says 138 multiplied by sine 27, close bracket, equals divided by 6.5, equals 9,64. So now we know that sine A is 9,64. Now what do we need to do? We need to, I can't be right, I've done something wrong. Let me have a look what I've done wrong. Uh, let me press clear and I've got 13 point, mm, we can delete, 13.8 multiplied by sine of 27, close bracket equals, Divided by, that's much better, divided by 6.5 equals 0.964. There we go, 0. Point, I must have put a zero on or times. Okay, so it's 0. 0.964. So then this, 0, 0,964. So to find A, what are we going to do? We're going to go shift sign of the answer. We're shift sign of the answer, close the bracket, equals... And that's 74.55 degrees. So A is 74,55 degrees. So that's this angle here, 74,55 degrees. 
So do you agree that since I've got this angle at 74.55 and this is 27, I can get B. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, and I'm gonna change color so you know what I'm doing. So I'm going to get B. So I'm using angle sum of triangle. And I'm gonna say 180 degrees minus 27 plus 74,55, which equals what? Okay, it becomes 180 minus bracket 27 plus 74.55, close bracket equals 78.45 degrees. Okay, so that becomes 78,45 degrees. So there is that angle size. And now that we've got that angle, do you agree we can work out B? Because we can use either of these sides and that angle and to get that side. I personally would go with 6.5 and 27 because that was given to me. So then I have a smaller chance of getting something wrong. So now I'm going to raise the green. Um, we're going to leave sign C over sign C. Okay, but this time we're using sine B over B. But do you agree I'm trying to find the size of the side? So actually what I want is I want B over sine B is equal to C over sine C. Okay, do you agree? So therefore B is going to be the length of side C, which is 6,5, multiplied by the sine of this angle, sine of 78,45, all over sine of sine C, which is sine 27 degrees. Okay, so then let's get out our calculator. So we got 6.5 multiplied by sine of 78.45, close bracket equals divided by sine of 27, close bracket equals, and that becomes 14.03. 14,03. So therefore, B is 14,03 units long. And if they tell you it's centimeters or meters, then obviously you need to write in centimeters or meters. Okay, good. Let's do another question. All right. This is another typical type of question that they like to ask in the exams, but this time they've filled in the information in the words, and now you need to translate that into your diagram, okay? It says he measures the can observer standing on a suspension bridge at point P, okay? He wishes to measure the height of the bridge above the ground, level QRS, okay? So in other words, he's on a bridge, Okay, yeah, it's a bridge. Okay, he's on the bridge. And there's the ground. Okay. And it says he measures the angle of depression to two beacons Q and S on the ground. Now remember, angle of depression is the angle that you have as you look from the horizontal down. Okay. The beacons are 800 meters apart. So all of this is 800 meters apart. Okay. Ang to angle Q, the angle of depression is 75 degrees. So angle of depression, if you're standing at P and looking down, the angle of depression to Q is 75 degrees, okay? And the angle of depression for S is 8 degrees, 8 degrees. It says how high is the suspension bridge above the ground? So they want to know what is that height? What is the length of PR? Okay, so do you agree that if this is 75 degrees, we've got alternate angles because this would be the horizon. I know it doesn't look like it, but that's the horizon. That's 75 degrees. This is always parallel with the ground. So therefore, this is 75 degrees. We also know that this is 8 degrees, then 
that is 8 degrees. Okay, now if that's the case, we've got that this is 75 and this is 8. Do you agree we can get that angle there? Okay, do you agree? Because all three angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So therefore, we can say that angle QPS, angle QPS is equal to 180 degrees minus 75 plus 8 which equals 180 degrees minus what is 75 plus 8? I don't know why I'm doing this. Okay, so we've got 75 plus 8 is equal to 83. I was saying to myself, I didn't know why I was reaching for my normal calculator when in fact, I should be using the calculator on the screen. And then we've got 180 minus 83 is going to be equal to 97. So that's 97 degrees. So this angle here is 97 degrees. Okay, and now we can decide whether we want to find PQ or PS. And why would I want to do that? Well, I'm going to use the sign rule. Okay, I'm going to use the sign rule to find either the length of PQ or the length of PS. Why do I want to do that? Because if I say, for example, find the length of PQ, say I found the length of PQ, right? Then do you agree in this red triangle, I would have the angle here, which is 75 degrees. I would have PQ. This is a right angle triangle. So using Sokotoa or the sign rule, I could find this height here. PR, which is what they want. They want to know how big PR is. So that's why we can either do that with PQ or you could do that with PS, but since I've now drawn in this red one, I'm going to use PQ. Okay, so do you agree that PQ over sine of 8 degrees, there's my 8 degrees, is equal to the whole of this, which is QS, over sine of 97 degrees. But QS is what? QS is 800 meters. So therefore PQ is equal to 800 sine 8 degrees all over sine 97. Okay, so let's go get out our calculator. And we're going to go 800 multiplied by sine of 8 close bracket equals divided by sine of 97 close bracket equals and PQ is 112.17 so PQ equals 112.17 meters 112,17 meters okay now we've got PQ do you agree we can use Sokotoa or the sun rule, but I'm going to use Sakatoa to get the length of PR, okay? Because we've got, we want the opposite side. We've got this angle of 75 degrees. We've got the hypotenuse. So do you agree that we've got the opposite and hypotenuse? We've got sine of 75 degrees equals the opposite, which is H, over the hypotenuse, which is 112,17. So therefore, we can say 112,17 multiplied by sine 75 degrees is equal to H. So let's get out our calculators. And we've got one, one, two, I'm just going to multiply this by sine of 75 close bracket equals, and it becomes 108.35. So H equals 108.35 meters. So what was his question? How high is the suspension bridge above the ground? The suspension bridge is 108.35 meters above the ground. Okay. Um, okay. I'm not going to do this. Okay, let's do this question. Sorry. I was just thinking that maybe I shouldn't bother. But it says an aircraft is picked up by two radar stations, P and Q, and they are 120 kilometers apart. It says how far is the aircraft from station P? So do you agree they want this side here? 
Okay, so this question again, because we're doing the sine rule, it's pretty obvious that we have to use a sine rule because there's no 90 degree angle. Okay, because 28 and 82 is above 100, so therefore there's no way this, this can be a 90 degrees. Okay, so therefore we have to use the sine rule or the cos rule. And when we learn the cos rule, which we'll end up doing on Thursday, on Wednesday now, um, we'll find out that the cos rule is basically two sides and an enclosed angle. So it's two sides and an enclosed angle, you use the cos rule. If you've got not that, and you don't have a right angle, you use the sine rule, okay? So if you think about that, we want to know what this length is, which we will call x, okay? So we're going to go x, over sine of 82 degrees is equal to 120 over, oopsie, 120 k's, k's over sine what? Sine what? It's sine of this angle. So we need to work out what that angle is. So we go 180 degrees minus 82 plus 28 is 180 minus 2 and 8 is 10, so that's 110 degrees, which equals 70 degrees. So therefore, this is 70 degrees, so we can say sine 70, and I apologize for changing color. So if x is equal to 120 sine 82 over sine 70. And now all we need to do is pop that into our calculator. And we've got 120, let's try again, 120 multiplied by sine of 82, close bracket equals, divided by sine 70, close bracket equals, and it's 126.4585521. Remember, unless I tell you otherwise, you always run off to two decimal places. So in this case, it's 126.46, okay, 126.46. So therefore, we can say that this is equal to 120, what did we say? 126.46, 126.46 kilometers. So the airplane is 126.46 kilometers away from station P. Ah, now, one last example. Actually, I'm not going to do this example because it's exactly the same as the previous one. So let's talk about the cosine rule. Okay, I want to go through the cosine rule with you and at least prove it to you today. And then we can actually look at using the cosine rule on, um, on when I see you on, well, when you come and watch on Wednesday. Okay, so let's have a look at it. The cosine rule says, if you have little a opposite angle big A, little b opposite big angle big angle b, and little c opposite big angle c, then it states that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, okay? Or b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cos b, and similar and similar. And it doesn't matter whether it looks the triangle looks like this or like this, this rule stands. So let's talk about proving things. Okay, so we've got a standard triangle. Okay, we've got triangle A, B, C, where little a is opposite A, little b is opposite little b. We've dropped a height, h, down, and opposite little big C would be little c, okay? But if we let this side be D, okay, then do you agree this length here will be C minus D? So now, if we had to look at this and we had to go, okay, fine, let's look at triangle DCB. DCB. Okay, so we're looking at the right hand side triangle. Okay, do you agree that by Pythagoras, A squared is equal to H squared plus C minus D squared? Okay. And if you look at triangle ACD, ACD, the, I'm going to make it red, so the red one. Sorry, I was thinking ahead of what I was going to do, ACD. 
Do you agree that B squared is equal to H squared plus D squared? Again, by Pythagoras. So, do you agree I could solve both of these for H? Okay, so let's do this one. I could say H squared is equal to B squared minus D squared. Okay, and I can go back here and go, well, H squared equals A squared minus C plus D squared. Okay, so do you agree that we've got two equations here, both ending in H squared? So therefore, I can equate these two. Okay, so let's do that. So I've got A squared minus C plus D squared is equal to B squared minus D squared. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply this bracket, okay? So I've got A squared minus C squared minus 2CD minus D squared is equal to B squared minus D squared. So because I've got two minus D squareds on the side, they cancel. Okay, right. So now do you see that if we were to solve this for A, we'd have A squared, that's an A, is equal to B squared plus C squared plus 2CD. Okay, do you agree? B squared, hang on, let me just work this out. Have I screwed up? B squared plus C squared. Um... B squared plus C squared minus 2CD. Why am I getting a plus when I should be getting a minus? We've got A squared minus C plus D squared. H squared, when I take it across, becomes A squared minus C plus D squared, and this H squared becomes B squared minus D squared. So H squared minus C plus D squared um, is equal to B squared minus D squared, right? So then this becomes, let me just write it out here, A squared minus C squared plus 2CD minus D squared plus D squared which becomes a squared, oh, that's a C, minus C squared, minus 2CD, minus D squared. Okay, grade um, 11, unfortunately we've run out of time and I seem to have made a silly algebraic area somewhere So because I need that to be a minus. So I will look at that and see what I've done wrong and I will show you on Wednesday. Have a great day.